But I want to talk about following the, the Holy Spirit in your prayer life. And so Zechariah 12 and, and 10, I just want to take the phrase out of that verse of Scripture. We want to talk about the spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer and supplication. The spirit of prayer. And Holy Spirit is the spirit that enables us, allows us to pray. And Jesus said in John 14, I believe it's verse, somewhere on verse 7, and then subsequent verses, he said, I'm going to send someone, a helper. And we know that word, a helper, the word helper in the Greek has seven, is a sevenfold meaning. And one of those words, helper, is, uh, you know, intercessor. Uh, he helps us to pray. God helps us to pray. And so we are encouraged by the Apostle Paul to, to pray in the Spirit. He didn't say pray with your mind. He didn't say pray with your emotion, although that's a part of it. It's not really that significant. But he says to pray in the Spirit. And, and let us determine several scriptures in the Bible in the New Testament where you see the phrase praying in the Spirit. You see that phrase come up a number of times in the, in the, in the New Testament, pray in the Spirit. Uh, Jesus, in talking to his disciples in John 4, chapter 4, he said that they that worship the Father must worship in spirit and in truth. And you know the Spirit, Jesus called Holy Spirit the Spirit of truth. Are you following this? And uh, you can look at those scriptures. Jesus said that in the fourth chapter of John that the Holy Spirit, uh, God is looking for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, thank God that Jesus sent the spirit of truth. John 16, 13, Jesus said the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will speak all truth. He'll tell us, show us all truth. And sometimes it can get very uncomfortable in our own personal lives because God will show you something uh, truthful that's not right in your life and, you know, you uh, get uncomfortable. So there is truth if you're not measuring up, so to speak. You're not really doing what you're supposed to do, and the Spirit of God will talk to you. And uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, the New Living Translation says that Zechariah 12, 10, then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. Then it says, they will look on, on, on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grave bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. Now, this is prophetic. This points out to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He is you know, uh, the one that whom they looked to who was pierced for us. Uh, you know, the prophet uh, Isaiah said he was pierced for our wounds, right? He was, he, he was pierced. He was the one that was pierced. His hands was pierced. His feet was, was pierced. And for us. But the prophet says that God will pour out a spirit of grace and Prayer, a spirit of prayer on us. And so I'm taking from this verse of scripture the spirit of prayer. There's only one spirit 
that is the true spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prayer. And he'll help us to pray. And so, over in the, um, uh, I want to uh, go to the uh, John, let's go to John, just a little bit of background here, John chapter 14. I hope you don't mind, we're going to go through a number of scriptures together. Uh, I hope you can just uh, do this in tongues, really fast. John, the Gospel of John, I'm reading the New Living here first. John 13, uh, 16, 13. Jesus has said here, when the Spirit of truth is come. Now, in Zechariah, he said, I'm going to pour out the Spirit of grace and truth. Now, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he is talking here about Holy Spirit. How many people know that you're limited? Amen. You're limited in many areas, and the very area that we can be aware of our limitation is how to pray about certain issues that you know nothing of, but you're baffled at how to tackle a certain area of prayer. How many of you have an issue right now that you, can, you, you, you need prayer on, but you don't know how to, what to do? Well, I'll just speak to you three guys. You're the only ones here tonight that, that uh, uh, I have issues. Pastor, you got issues? You bet I got a lot of issues. Just take a look around in here. Uh, you know, first of all, I have issue with some people who are not honest. I get issue with, with, with dealing with different things. So uh, we all have something that we need to pray about and we need to tackle. And so God says, I'm going to, Jesus said, I'm going to send you this spirit of prayer. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he said, he will guide you. So this spirit of prayer, he's going to guide you in your prayer life. He said, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard, and he will tell you about the future. Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, uh, would you please go to John 14? John chapter 14. And John chapter 14, I believe is verse 7. Uh, <clears throat> let's go and see. Let's go read from verse 7. Um, Jesus said, if you had really known me, you would have, you know my, who my father is. From now on, um, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. See the Holy Spirit, God the Father, Holy Spirit, they're one of the same. They don't, they, you know, are, are the same. They're one God, but expressed in a different way. And uh, we need to see here that Jesus is saying that if you see me, you're going to see God the Father. Glory to God. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me show, uh, to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me. He does the work. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because the work has seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me, the same works that I do or have done, even greater works because I'm going to, my, to be with my Father. You can ask anything in my name, and I'll do it. You can ask for anything. In my name, I'll do it. You know that word, I believe that word, the ask is demand. No, you're not demanding of, of God. You're demanding of the devil. 
I sat in my office today. Somebody said to me, I had a devil. He, he, was, uh, he threw me on the floor. I said, well, why don't you use your authority? Don't you have authority over all devils? And uh, we need to use our authority. Hallelujah. He says, uh, okay, <laughs> you can ask me anything in my name and I will do it so, so that you can, um, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That word is asked, the second word asked there is actually not demand, it means to pray. So, there are certain things that you can do when you have the spirit of prayer and you understand the spirit of prayer, you can just demand things in your life and God will, will do it in, Je- in his in name of Jesus. That name of Jesus is a key to answer prayer. The name of Jesus is above every name. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are struggling with certain areas of your life. I want to tell you... Uh, the battle is not yours, and the fight is not over yet. I mean, there's some things God's working on your behalf, and, and it's taking some time because God has to uh, work through human vessels. It's, he's working through people, talking to people. How, how long did God have to work with you to get you here? How long had God had to deal with you before you gave up cigarettes? How long did God have to work for you to, to get you to give up uh, alcohol or uh, bingo or uh, uh, lying or, or whatever it is, even after some people get baptized, Holy Spirit, born again, have baptized Holy Spirit, they got water baptized, and yet they're still, their lives are still not straight. They're not perfect. And even after people walk with God, they go back to the old life sometimes and come back again. Just to make sure they don't want to go back. <laughs> eh? So, God is patient. James says in John, James 5 says that God is long suffering. He's patient. He's waiting for that harvest to, to bring in that harvest of souls. And uh, I remember Brother Higgins saying something in school about, you know, uh, that God is patient and he, he, he's, uh, he's waiting for this uh, harvest so that we can, we can pray, pray through. And uh, we, uh, we have a partner. Merry Christmas from Spirit Alive and Kenneth Hagen Ministries Canada. We want to bless you with a free book for the month of December. We are offering the book, His Name Shall Be Called Wonderful by Reverend Kenneth E. Hagen. Learn about the wonderful name of Jesus and God's plan of redemption for us all. Get your free copy by calling 1-866-707-4362. Quote offer KIT-16SA12. Again, 1-866-707-4362 to order your free copy today. This offer expires December 31st, 2016. We have a partner. And we better get to know our partner. We have to get to know the spirit of grace. The spirit of supplication. Hallelujah. God is good. And his mercy endures forever. I read there in Lamentation 3, I think it was 24... Um, it says that God's mercy is fresh every day. Hallelujah. Amen. If you made a mistake, praise God, it's brand new again. <laughs> oh, praise God. I want you to turn over here to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. And uh, I want to go back to the good old King James Bible. I like the King James Bible. I study in the King James Bible, but I found lots of people don't understand the King James, so you have to break it up with the other version so that I don't go order my pizza in the King James. I order it in the English language because that guy will understand me. 
You know, not everybody understands that. So, and so for us who understand the Bible, we read, we read the King James, we, we study it, it's the best translation there is. And some people think that, uh, you know, you have the devil if you read the New Living. So be careful. <laughs> hey, Beth, are you still here? Yeah. All right, let's go to, did you find uh, Ephesians? That's in the Bible. Ephesians 6 and verse 18. For some reason, sometimes this is slow. That's why they like the old version of Bible. Now, after Paul begins to talk about the, the, the um, equipment, the spiritual weapons, and uh, he goes on to say, put on the full armor of God, and so on. He begins to exhort people. And all those, the armor of God really is symbolic of uh, what we have in Christ and who we are in Christ. And uh, they all refer to the word of God, something about the word that we have. And uh, then he goes, he talks about praying always with all prayer and supplicating in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. There's a lot of information in that one single verse that says praying always. And we ask yourself, can I always pray? And can I pray when I'm eating my sandwich? And can I you know, pray that I'm snoring at night? And uh, what about if I'm on the dentist? Uh, can, I, uh, can I pray? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you can. You can pray under your breath. And uh, praying always, basically, that's talking about that you need to be ready to pray all the time and have a spirit of prayer on you. And uh, notice the other term, it says, praying always with all prayer. With all prayer. Tell them I'm not coming, I'm not, I'm not home. <laughs> so praying always with all prayer. Everybody say, praying always, praying always. With, all prayer. with all prayer. So all prayer refers to, you got to be able to pray and switch gears and pray whatever you need to pray. You have to know what kind of pray, prayer to apply. Okay? If, if, uh, if uh, sometimes around here they do all kinds of work around the building, and sometimes they said to me, Pastor, do you have any tape? So I said, yeah, I got some scotch tape. Well, that's not the tape I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, uh, it could be, is it, is it masking tape? Is it uh, carpenter's tape? Whatever it is, you know, is it like, uh, uh, you know, uh, duct tape? So you have to know which tape he's talking about. It could be a tape recorder. I don't know. But uh, you see, you have to understand there's different kinds of prayers. Sometimes before you get ready to pray, pray, God wants you to deal with your heart first, and that is he wants you to confess some things that you've not, you need to confess to say, God, you know, I'm, I need to repent here about something. You're showing me, you're showing me some truth. Please forgive me. I repent. I'm going to stop that. And then you can get ready to pray because God will deal with you first. If you have a good prayer life, you'll have a good spiritual life. You'll be able to grow. You cannot have a good prayer life if you don't have a good prayer life. Uh, you are sick. <laughs> Spiritually speaking, you uh, are maybe uh, starving. We need to pray. A prayer, a spiritual prayer, is like breathing. It gives you natural life in the spiritual realm. You have to pray to continue to get refreshed and build up. And, and, and God to deal with our hearts. So don't be feeling bad, but he's telling us to pray in a way that we have a spirit of prayer upon us. Supplicating in the spirit. Now, I, I wanted to show this verse of scripture because it says supplication in the spirit. Supplicating in the spirit. You should pray with all kinds of prayers, but you should supplicate in the spirit. Everybody say supplicate in the, in the spirit. Say supplication. Now say in the spirit. Say in the spirit. In the spirit. 
Okay, he's not saying pray with your emotions. He's not saying praying out of your mind. Okay? And the, the big problem is this kind of prayer takes spiritual language to understand spiritual language, spiritual people to understand spiritual language, uh, learning to read the Bible as God teaches you, the Holy Spirit teaches you, because he is, he is a, a person. And if we're walking in the natural all the time, if you're always praying in the natural all the time, praying out of your head, you look at a situation, you look how you feel, you're always praying out how you feel. Well, praying out all your feelings is not always praying proper. I mean, you could tell God how you feel and, and all that, but that's not going to get the job done. It's praying in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers will get the job done. Sometimes part of that praying, uh, you know, repenting and then praying in the Spirit at the same time is going to get the job done. And, of course, you know, one of the prayers that is foremost in every person's life is that the prayer of faith. You have to understand how to pray, pray, to pray the prayer of faith. You have to pray in faith in order to pray in the Spirit. You have to understand how to pray in faith, how to believe God, and how to actually start to do this. Oh, Baba Shikili Masamba. Oh, Rabba Kasata. It takes, it takes faith to do that. It takes faith to pray in tongues. Because you'll just be wasting your time. It takes faith to pray in the Spirit over an area that you know nothing of. And believe that while you're praying in the Spirit over that area, that God is doing something about that area. Huh? Glory to God. <clears throat> There's things I prayed for days. Weeks. And we have to continue to pray over some areas. There's, uh, you only pray the prayer of faith one time, one time for some things. The rest of the time you apply, uh, if you believe in God, if you're praying, praying for your own need, you, you ask God that thing one time. Andrew Murray says if you ask God about that thing again, the same way you did last time, you didn't pray in faith the first time. <laughs> and so you have to ask God if you're going to pray for something about an area. Maybe you're emotionally discouraged about it and you have to ask God, talk to God again. Don't ask God the same way. <coughs> Just tell the Lord, Lord, <clears throat> you know that prayer we, I prayed about? I just want to remind you again. I'm, I'm going to lift it up again and and just begin to thank you for it. So I'm going to offer prayer of thanksgiving. I don't see no answer right now. I don't see any change. And my emotions are getting a little bit uh, impatient here. And I'm feeling a little frightened here, Lord. Uh, I need some help. Sorry. God understands things about your emotions. Because you have to, uh, you know, walking by faith and you're praying for something, you have to contend with your emotions. Because your emotions are not saved. Huh? How many of all your emotions are saved? You say, I'm, I hate somebody. Uh, you know, you're not, you're not saved in that area. Uh, you know, uh, James says that our soul is not saved. We, we have to renew our soul. We have to renew our minds. We have to t control our feelings. We have to uh, sanctify our feelings. We have to control our thinking. We have to take it and bring it into captivity and say, that's not God's way. So I pull that down, and I'm using the weapon of warfare, and I'm going to think positive about that area. <laughs> Amen? And that's hard. It's not easy. Uh, the fight of faith is not you fighting devils. The fight of faith is you fighting with your soul most of the time. Yeah, the devil is telling you stuff, but a lot of times it's, uh, you're just talking to yourself about controlling your own feelings, your own emotions, dealing with your own uh, uh, um, you know, insecurities. 
You know, the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but mighty through God. And 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Mighty through God to the pulling down of your hair. No, pulling down <laughs> of strongholds. <laughs> Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Those strongholds are thoughts and and, and just uh, things that have been there in brain uh, from long time, from passed on, from grandpa and, and your dad and, and so on. It's all in the family. You think a certain way, and you have to begin to fight against that. That's, that's, that's a faith fight. And the devil says, ah, you know, you'll never, you'll never be healed of that. You, you won't get out of that. Your family's been that way for a long time. Look at this happening. You're in poverty. You, you got this problem. You got mental health illness. You got physical illness. You got blood sicknesses. And that's been in there in your family. And you're, you're going to get it. And you're going to suffer. And you're going to cry. And, uh, and so on and so on. He, he talks to you like that. He tells me, I'm going to kill you. <clears throat> well, why didn't he do it before? Because he couldn't do it. Why? Because uh, we have the spirit of grace upon us yeah. and supplication, praise God. Amen. Don't just sit there. Fight back. Amen. Fight back and tell them, no, I'm in the name of Jesus. I'm under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And my spirit uh, is, is in, in, in the Lord. Me and the Lord are one. Amen. You know, Psalm 118, I think verse 17 says, I will not die, but I'll live. And declare the works of God. Hallelujah. I'll not die, but live. Psalm 91 and 16 says that with long life will I satisfy him, show my salvation. Thank God. Children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is a uh, uh, promise that, co- that the first commandment comes with a promise. We would like to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus into your life if you haven't done that. Say this simple prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, contact the information on the screen and we will love to send you some material to help you in your new walk with Christ.